Good afternoon. This is Marcia coming at you from Williston, Florida. And we have sunshine. And it's muggy now because we have a lot of moisture. There's places on the roadside. Um, I have this beautiful time warp drive that I take many days going into Gainesville. And some of the sides of the roads are starting to make like little lakes from all the rain we had. Um, but I'm getting back into the groove and I was able to go work outside today. And I'm going to work outside tomorrow and Thursday. And then Friday, I'm going to go to a business in Gainesville and teach the employees a little seven minute warm up workout Tai Chi Qigong exercise routine they can do. Uh, learn how to do it. It's simple. I'll give them all the little nuances um, about doing the exercises so that they can approach them mindfully because like you see me exercising here, you know, doing my Qigong practice on these videos I make, but the truth is I'm just in it. I'm doing it and when you're teaching it, there's some things that need to be spoken and things that should be pointed out so that we're aware of them and, and how all this stuff works in Qigong and Tai Chi. So I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> I know one thing that kind of annoys a lot of people is that you know we get all gung-ho gung on an idea like especially New Year's resolutions we're all gung-ho and we have our goals set and we start out all, you know, on fire about it. And then as time goes on, we get sucked back into the routine of our daily lives and then we just forget to practice. And my first teacher, um, Anthony Cora Hyas is his name, he talks about a brilliant thing that I love. And it's about reward loops and how we can keep ourselves motivated easily and keep it fun instead of like, oh God, I just got home from work, I'm tired and I have to go practice. Because that's not the mindset we want to go do Qigong in. And today, honestly, I, you know, I took an entire week off of work because of the rain. And so I went out and worked today and it was hot. It was very muggy. And so I came home and yes, I was tired. And I was like, oh, you know, I need to, I need to do what I said I was going to do. But I didn't beat myself up about it. What I did instead is I took a nice bath. I relaxed. I cleaned out some of my emails. And I found some music that I like, and I got myself built up into the frame of mind. And now I'm ready to practice Qigong. It sounds like a great idea to me. And there's little things I learned, little tricks that just become habits. Like, you know, when we wake up in the morning, you know, we go brush our teeth, you know, we stumble into the kitchen and make our coffee, and we're all kind of like on autopilot. And, and, I'll tell you something, I picked the morning when I'm, you know, waiting for my coffee to brew. That takes a few minutes. It's the perfect time. A few minutes, two minutes even, two minutes a day, just to, you know, warm up, stretch. I mean, I do that before I even get out of bed. And um, it, it keeps us going and it even recharges our chi engine a little bit keeps us flexible and the reward works like this. It's like you wake up and you go, okay, I'm brewing my coffee, love my coffee. Oh, I have a couple minutes. I can do a few little moves. And then my reward is I feel good because I stretched and I did some breathing and now I get to really enjoy my morning cup of coffee. So there's little opportunities throughout the day that we all can look for and that's one of mine um, and it's helped me 
Because sometimes, honestly, listen, I live alone. I can do what I want, when I want, how I want, and who's to know the difference, except for me. And so if I'm trying to be an authentic person and improve, then, you know, I need to kind of have some little tricks I can fall back on. Because I'll tell you something, I've talked a little bit about these subconscious programs that run. And when we start a new practice like Qigong, and trying to, you know, mindfulness, things like that. Listen, our bodies and our minds rebel. They're like, hey, wait, this is not the program. This isn't what we're doing. This isn't how it's done. How many jo jobs have you gone to and heard people that just got hired in and they say things like, well, that's not how we did it at blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, well, I did it this way when I was at blah, blah. And okay, that's great, but we're here now. So let's, you know, let's do it now. And um, today I'm just gonna show you some easy things because I also talked about starting out slowly. So it might look overwhelming and like, whoa, overload. How did she do that move? What is she doing? So today, after my nice bath and I'm all clean and stuff, I, I'm going to show you all a few exercises that you can actually do in a chair. And then they can lead you to, it can be like a goal. Because remember I said, let's take small steps, baby steps, move slow, never, there is no hurry in Tai Chi. There is no hurry in Qigong. We go with the pace of the energy of life. And that varies, it has different tempos, absolutely. I mean, you know, if we're um, about to watch a volcano erupt, we're not going to be sitting idly by. We're probably going to be running. Um, other times we geared up and worked hard and saved up time for vacation, and now we're just going to go sit on the beach and vegetate for a few days. So there's different energies, and they have different purposes, and we get to choose what energies we want to have when we practice our Qigong, and I love that. So today, um, we're kind of going to start at our heads, like we do, and just, you know, find a very comfortable chair. This one's cushioned. I love it. And, you know, one of the principles in Tai Chi and Qigong, it's called Long Spine. And a good way to describe long spine is pretend that there's this little elastic string that runs from your tailbone up through your spine all the way out the top of your head and we can hang it on a hook from the ceiling and so our spine kind of opens up and relaxes and gravity helps stretch it some. So that's kind of what we mean by long spine, and that's something we can practice sitting up in a chair and making sure our, our, we're not overdoing it, we're not humped over, we're not sway back, but we just relax into our tailbones so that we feel light, but we're upright and we feel like our chest is open. And from here now, you know, find, find your space, find your place, and just start rolling your shoulders slowly, hands on lap, rolling forward, breathe, just get out of this little crunch. Go at your own pace, 
in your comfort zone. Listen to your body, what feels good. If there's a little space you feel like, oh yeah, there's a little extra special. Go ahead. Do it. Okay, just don't force things. Ease into them. The beauty of some of these exercises is that I know a lot of people spend a lot of time in front of a computer. I do, because I'm making videos all the time. And I that's where I read a lot of stuff is on my computer screen. And so this is something you can even do at your desk. You know, and just relax your shoulders down. And some of this is about, you know, letting go of this scrunched up neck stuff. You know, just relax. You can let your arms hang down by the side. Just remember your long spine. But don't scrunch up your shoulders when you start to raise your arms. Make, you know, think about your shoulders being low and stretching. And you can feel your lungs opening. Feel that for a minute. And then we can start to stretch our backs a little. Our necks go down inside. Oh, yes, feel it stretching the back. Come up, hinging like a, lifting from, from your belly here, from your sacrum, and let that movement go up your spine. And down, relaxing the neck. Go backwards a little. Let me do it. Just be comfortable if your shoulders feel like they want to hike up. Relax. Exhale. And down. sure your feet are good in front of you and you're kind of on the edge of the chair and you can stand up and down and up and down and up and my butt gently, but I'm keeping my knees centered up over my feet, so I balance, and my back is kind of hinged like a tabletop, but it's not forced or pressured, oh, I can stretch out stuff down from the bottom, you can come up, stand up, That. Okay, that's a little chair warm up. Really focusing, making our spine feel flexed and relaxed, and our chest feel open. And it feels good. All right, I'm going to do another one in a little bit that's a little bit uh, not necessarily more energetic, but. I'm going to be standing because I like that flow. I like standing meditation. 
That's probably why I do Qigong and Tai Chi more than I do yoga because, I mean, I know there's all kinds of yoga positions, but I'm just not, I don't really want to sit on the floor. So, but yoga is great stuff. I'll tell you something, honestly, it's the oldest kind of healing art. And somehow through time, as I said before, a lot of these written records are gone. Um, but it traveled over to the Middle East and China. And some of the principles of breathing and yoga were incorporated by these old grand masters. And so, again, it's all connected. And you find what works for you. You find what speaks to you, what, what feels good to your body, and you roll with that. All right, later.